because it's going to tie together and also summarize a lot of the good points that have been made today. I'm not going to say, okay, so it's all about improving our local community or whatever community we come from. I'm just very proud of Milton, and we, my family, have lived here for many, many years, and we're just, you know, we are as true Milfordian as we could possibly be, and, you know, I've always wanted, along with my family, to do everything we can to help improve it, so let's, you know, talk about it. So, um, you've heard it already. Polite, I call it polite perseverance and pleasant tenacity. Polite perseverance and pleasant tenacity. You've got to be willing to go to that. You, you know, it's like people like to do with other people who are nice. If you're abrupt, no matter how good your idea is, walk away. But things take a long time. Well, depending on what you're talking about. And here's some projects that I've worked on and either are finished or, you know, getting near to be finished. We're going to talk about public transportation. But let me just tell you, it took three years. It wouldn't take it to take that long, but it took three years. Uh, enabling handicapped parking, it took two years. Um, upgrading the Milford Trail to support persons with disabilities, it's two years. But we're still got more to go before that's going to come to fruition. And um, just now began the Town Milford 88 Tunnel 2 transition plans. That's bringing up all the town buildings to meet 88 code. You would have thought that that would have been done already, but you're getting there. But you just got to, I mean, the point is, on every one of these, pleasant and perseverant and tenacious but polite in everything. Next, please. The first question is, what do you think is needed? And we're going to come back to that question at the end because I'm going to ask you, what do you think is needed? And the better you come up with a good idea, you'll listen to my good idea, and I'll get y'all to help me work on my good idea. What's the problem? How will the solution benefit Milford? And who needs to approve? You really need to help identify that. And then you write it down. Cannot express how important it is to have the selectmen constantly understanding what you want to do. At the end of the day, not much gets passed in Milford without the support of the Board of Selectmen. You're also going to need the support of the Finance Committee for different kinds of things, but most everything is going to require the support of the Board of Selectmen. So, as I tell everybody, start from a working document. You go in right at the beginning of, your, of, of, uh, of a Selectmen meeting. You have open hearing. And, or open speaking, and you just say to everybody, I'm here just to tell you about maybe bringing public transportation here to Milford. I'm not asking you to approve it. I'm not asking you to do anything about it. But I just want to tell you, it's something that I'm going to start to work on, and I'm going to keep you informed. And they're going to say something. They're going to say, yeah, good idea. Yeah, you've got a long way to go. You've got some things to do it. Or they may not say anything. But that's OK. Selectmen like to know from the beginning what's going on in their town. Next one, please. Okay, everything is about community organizing. The first one is, is you make that short presentation to your board of selectmen, and you gain support from the key community leaders. When I became chairman of the Commission on Disability, I just went around and asked everybody, what's the number one problem persons with disabilities face? Just keep asking that question. What's the number one problem? What's the number one problem? What's the number one problem? Came back, public transportation, public transportation, public transportation. In the Milford area, we belong to the MWRTA. There were 15 communities in the Milford, I mean, in the MWRTA. That's the Metro West Regional mm -hmm. Transport Authority. 13 of those 15 all had public transportation. There were only two that didn't. Milford and Hudson. Well, I could explain away Hudson. I couldn't come up with a good reason why Milford didn't have public transportation, especially with so much support for it. I went around, part of my, part of my number two, I went around and saw all 13 clergy. I sat down with them, told them what I wanted to do, and they ended up signing a petition with me. And it's one of my most proud moments when I had all 13 clergy signing the same document across the board, saying we need to bring public transportation. That's a really good way to start. 
because as we update that, well, I should not pass over number three. Then at the same time, I have to identify who in the town of Milford is going to have to get involved with this. You know, because they're not going to get extra people to work on it, so who's going to be, you know, participating? Well, I think the chief of police is going to be participating because there's an issue surrounding traffic control. And I knew our highway commissioner is going to be involved because we're going to be putting up signage. And I knew, and I knew, and I knew, so I went to see them all individually. And I said, tell me your issues. Tell me what's on your mind. Tell me, tell me. Kept all that. Updated the working document and go back. Phase two, come back to the board of selectmen and say, here's where I am. You know, I, I've got this, this, this petition and I showed it to them. I guess I got that on my side, right? So you got it. You got it. <laughs> Found out from the other employees. Who else has to be involved with questions they have, how we might go about resolving them? Ask them now. What questions do the board of selectmen have? Well, question came up right from the beginning. How much is this going to cost, Harold? Okay, it's going to cost $250,000. Hmm. That was the reaction. Hmm. Getting $250,000 for anything in this town is very hard. Remember, we run out of budget that's got to be maintained as, you know, as, as strictly um, budget neutral. So if I'm asking for $250,000, that means somebody else is not getting $250,000. And that's a hard choice for a selectman to, to, you know, to, to make, that, make that, that alternative choice. So now I'm going to be able to understand, okay, so that's where we're going. I'm not asking you to make that decision. But this is what we're beginning to talk about. The question came up, well, Harold, how can we lower that $250,000? I don't think we can come up with $250,000. Maybe we could do a hundred. Find a way to get it done for a hundred, and maybe we can consider it. Okay, well, got it. We had three community open forums. I hope some of you went to, went to them. Three times different parts of the town. We had 50, 80, and 100 people all asking questions, and a lot of people voicing their negative perspective about putting public transportation to Milford. And there were a lot. I mean, I'm not going to kid you. But, you know, what I thought was going to be a really easy thing to do turned out to be pretty challenging. There were just people who just felt like, you know, we don't need to spend this kind of money on bringing public transportation to this town. For whatever reasons, just didn't think it was the, the right way to spend it. Okay, well, you know, I mean, I gotta acknowledge it and deal with it. All right. I gotta now go through and make sure for the board of selectmen, everybody that's involved is on side. Because that's gonna be one of the questions that the board of selectmen are gonna ask. Are there gonna be any problems with the highway surveyor, with the town administrator, with the town planner, with anybody? Because I don't want to hear about a problem later on. I want to know everything is bulletproof right from the beginning. Because at some point, we're going to get out in front of a town meeting. And they don't want to hear anything that they haven't heard about before. Updated presentation. Solicit a final set of questions. All right. So, Harold, how are we going to get this down to MWRTA? Down to $100,000. Well, this is fortunately when Brian took a real helpful leadership position on this one. And Brian said, okay, I'll work with the state, I'll work with the MWRTA, and I'll go find a way to get this number down. And he did. He found a way for the state to put in some money, for the MWRTA to put in some money, and brought it down to $100,000. Much easier number for the board of selectmen to, to do, especially when we presented it as, this is a one-year pilot program. If the numbers don't bear out for the second year, Let's stop it. If not enough people are using it, let's stop it. But let's spend $100,000 to find out if public transportation is a good idea. Please? All right, so we've got a final report. Now we need to go in front of the Finance Committee. I still remember that day. Michael, I still remember that day. Very tough. Fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, at that point, now all three selectmen are in favor of this. Okay? And you know, 
this is this is taking now 18 months. I mean, this isn't happening fast. This is taking 18 months to get all to address each questions of Bill Buckley, of Bryant, of Wilk and Cates, because they all come out of it from a different perspective. They all have their own questions. They all want to be able to do it. So we work with them. So we're sitting in front of the uh, finance committee. 15, 15, 15 members of the finance committee, all sorts of perspectives, legitimate because you know they are the ones charged with the responsibility of making sure the budget balances. So if I ask for a hundred thousand dollars, they're first thinking about where we're going to find a hundred thousand dollars. You know, from where are we taking this? And second of all, why do we even need to do this in the first, second place here? You know, either we had the money. I don't know if this is such a good idea. It passed nine to six. That's how it passed the uh, finance committee. Nine to six. Was it eight to seven? Nine to six. Nine to six. Six, right. in right. six in opposition. Can you imagine? I mean, from the disparaging <laughs> finance committee. But okay, I got a favorable recommendation out of the finance committee. I got a favorable recommendation from the from the uh, board selectmen and a favorable recommendation. I'll leave it at 96, but okay, it's still going to say favorable on there. Tell me, okay, it's an article on the warrant. One of the board of selectmen, in fact, it was, uh, I think it was Bill Buckley, yeah, it was Bill Buckley, who actually presented the, the, the article. And uh, fortunately enough, it passed. And, and we started, the, the, that was in April, May, and by July 1st or August 1st, we started our first year program with, with public transportation. Um, we now have a transportation advisory committee. It's been rebudgeted because of the success we had the first year, and it's continuing on. Um, I think it's improved the town of Milford. You know, I, 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 you know, I mean, there's been a lot of people who've said to me that, you know, helping kids get to, get to jobs afterwards, after school, or helping, you know, persons who didn't have transportation get to the hospital or this or that was a good thing. So, you know, I, you know, but understand, you know, you got to have a perspective <coughs> to get it through. But once you do a lot of it, it'll happen. Right? You know, I knew all along, eventually, it was going to pass. Okay. This is my question. What's next? Can't just stop there with all those things. Who wants to make a change in Milford? Who wants to put something in Milford? Somebody's got something. Or else you're going to end up with my idea. Well, I got an idea. Okay. We just bought the water company. Right. And they appointed some. Three and, okay. Three, three, but three, three, that's three, going to be an elected position, yes. I understand. And yes. I, just from where I said personally, I struggle with that because I worry that someone who's popular could end up as a water commissioner, not someone who's qualified. So I feel like that should be a change that you should so, make. Okay, so first of all, let me put that in perspective. Our town planner is appointed, our building commissioner is appointed, our town engineer is appointed, our legal counsel is appointed, all because of appointed by this work selectman. Okay. okay. So they have to have qualifications. They, they are interviewed in order to right? We just, hired, we just hired a new building commissioner. We also changed the treasurer, too, right? And the treasurer, thank you, just but, like that, right. because we wanted to be sure right. the town. It's a lot right. of money we're investing. So you go back to my first slide. Okay. Make a short presentation to the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. And you say, I am concerned, as you just said. Mm -hmm. And they might say something to you, they may not say something to you, okay? One of them, I think pretty much would agree with you, because I know it's positionalized. Probably pretty much agree with you, but you follow those steps, and you go around and you find out who else, you know, who else would agree with you, and you come back with, you know, heads of departments or folks from other. You find out water companies in other towns. That's always a good way. Mm -hmm. They elected their commission, their commission members, and you come back with seven towns all nearby. None of them elect. Why are we the only ones? That's very valuable to a board selectman. Because that gives them the reason. But if you come back and you say, well, they're all elected, but we better find some others mm -hmm. that, that came back. I was distracted by a family member text, so I missed this part. Do you, would you write like a memo, maybe, as a, a place to start? Yes. Would you put your argument in the memo? Absolutely. Even, 
That's Talk to anybody. This you, time you, write, it all out. you write a one page document, you send it to the Board of Selectmen, and then you go to the Board of Selectmen meeting. And at the beginning of the Board of Selectmen, there's an open call, and you just begin by saying, I believe it would be in the interest of Milford to have our water commissioners appointed as we have for this position, that position, this position, that position. And the reason why is I'm not sure we're going to get the expertise. And I think these other seven communities have found that to be the advantageous way. And they're going to go, okay, this is something reasonable. Here's some questions, okay? And you go off and you begin to get a group together. Maybe you get some, you know, the uh, Department of Public Works from uh, the, the head of the Department of Public Works from Franklin. He's not elected. They know this guy really well. To write an email to you saying, you know, we've been doing this for many, many years. We never do this. This begins to move things along. Fortunately, since this doesn't have anything to do with money, you don't have to worry about the finance <laughs> committee. And that's a good thing. That's a good They'll still have an opinion. But, and you just keep Any changes have to come to the finance I know. But they're not, they're, they're just going to ask, is it going to cost us money? Well, it would cost us money, theoretically. Yeah, how so? Well, yeah. I would think that if, if you're going to appoint someone, you'd want someone who's good and qualified, and you may have some candidates, so it's going to be a salary position. Okay, so it's going to be salary one way or the other. Well, yeah. the way we organize it here is we have a general manager mm -hmm. who's well paid. Mm -hmm. We have, as we do for the other commissions, mm -hmm. um, they get a stipend. Now, you might want to see. full time? No. no. The, the water commissioners are, are basically a board that's going to meet, you know, after hours or... You know, be an honorary they're they're like, the, like the board of trustees here for the, the library. Right. They oversee, uh, and they hire a director that oversees operations. So the water company will um, hire a water company manager, a uh, water department manager now. Who has a day-to-day... -day who has a day-to-day -day okay. operation. Mm -hmm. And those three commissioners will be in charge of hiring and firing that person and setting a budget. So, but here's where it might cost some money because I think what is the number? Six thousand, seven thousand? It's between it's, no, it's between five and three hundred and fifty. Yeah, something around. Let's say six thousand dollars. Fifty-four eighty-one. Fifty-four eighty-one. That's all we're paying our water commissioners. I won't argue. This. Somewhere around fifty-five hundred dollars, and you might say, but if we really want to get good commissioners. We got to pay them more money. So this is when you might say we need to go to ten because you've heard that from all the other places. That's what they pay their commissioners, right? And that's good data, and that's where it might go to the uh, would go to the finance committee that we need to allocate more money for this. And it's on the basis of finding qualified persons who would be willing to do it. And here's the going rate in all these other communities. Would it be my? I mean, I don't feel like it would be. That's not my issue. But they're paid so much as. Getting qualified people, and that would be determined by maybe other people. Yeah, I mean, would you be, but it would be a question that would come up okay. and say, you know, somebody would ask the question, well, can we really find qualified people for this amount of money? Yeah. And you're the one leading the effort, and you either say yes or no. Mm -hmm. You know? Harold, it eventually goes back to the town meeting, which you were talking yeah. about. Who has the final say for town meeting members? If she wants to change uh, electing, yeah. uh, rather than electing sewer commissioners, appointing them, that has to go to the town yeah. meeting. So you right. have a, if you are a town meeting member, your voice is just as important as a member of the board of select. Absolutely. The opposite side of that argument is you're putting your faith in three members of a board of selectmen, and whether they have friends that they want to appoint as, as opposed to qualifying. I just think of uh, the controversy where our former representative, Marie Prenti, went to the selectmen and said, why wasn't Steve Manguso appointed to the uh, Milford Youth Commission? You have a 21-member commission. There are only seven or eight members appointed. What? You've got 13 spots, and you, don't you think that's a political issue? And you have a board of selectmen that is a political body, all right? So that's why it's important to get people to go out and vote to get qualified Absolutely. candidates, because you don't like what the what the board of selectmen is doing, all right? Uh, Do you all goes out to the basic. Yeah, that's a good point. point. Right. Yeah, I mean, like we're the sure commissioners who are elected, all right? And, they seem to be doing a good job. I mean, you put your qualifications out there. Yes, you have the support of those people that voted for you. Maybe they're your relatives or whatever. You've got a better base than somebody else. But, you know, I mean, there's both sides yeah, of the argument. And that's, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, and that's hmm. absolutely, you know, um, 
ideally, before you go to town meeting, you'd have the support of the board of selectmen, but that is not required. But you're going to know that there's going to be some arguments, some, some good points made that, that Mike just made, and you've got to be prepared to deal with those as part of it. So an article gets drawn up, right? It gets, it gets put onto the warrant. It goes to town meeting, number 11. There'll be a vote called by Mike. You'll get up. You'll be asked to be the first person to speak, and you'll say, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we should for the following reasons. And there'll be some give and take, go back and forth. My pass, my not pass. But this is the way the whole process works. And to end, if I could chicken thing, you want to come back next year with a, with a different way of going about it? Let's do that again. Well, we can do it. We can, it doesn't mean just because it's done once in the negative, we can come back. One of the things, that, a couple of things. One of the things that came came up when you when Mike was talking, he found out who his enemies were on that issue. Right. He didn't find all your enemies, but I'm sure you have others. But anyway, but he found out who your enemies were. <laughs> the the problem. Problem. What the problem? Was? Just just the arguments from the other side. Right. The opposition. The arguments. Not enemies. I don't have enemies. Just just, just the perspectives. You know, so that you could address yeah, them. But you know what? Part of your remarks. You say, well, okay, well, what was, what's the big issue? And say, well, the big issue, you, the thing you can change is we'll continue it the way it is, only the fee will be different. Which will allow you to get what you want, which is four chickens, and allow the people that were worried about it, that they can, they can think about it. You almost won. The other point is you lost, well, you lost in the popular vote by what, three votes? Yeah, the, they needed a few thirds, but I but lost the majority. The majority was two. three votes. Yeah. Three votes. Yeah. Okay, we get 26 percent of the voting population that shows up on a good year. Yeah. Okay, so that means that any it is a general election. 26 percent of the and that's only about half of the population. Right. So that means that one, each one of your votes is for eight people. Yeah. So I mean, it's amazing. It's a, you lose, you know, by, uh, was it, uh, Franken won by, what, 600 and something votes in Minnesota? Right. It, was, huh? it was very close. Yeah. yeah. He says, I mean, he says, and that's a, that's a statewide Senate. You just, it's, you know, decisions are made by the people that show up. So let me just, again, begin. Just really close. Improving government is an important thing for all of us citizens. We all need to participate. There really is no day. It's us, okay? It's us. And we have the capacity to change anything we, we want to change in this town. It's remarkable. Things can change, and they have. So that's an important issue to you. Well, rethinking it, too, mm -hmm. would be something to kind of hang back and okay. see how this commission plays out. Okay. And that's how good. they do, and then so, kind of keep it on the back burner and see if there's a problem. So ask me. What my next project is. What's your next project, Carol? I'm glad you asked that question. How much is it going to cost us? He's less glad that you asked that. It's under development. Um, we have two puppies at home. The surrounding seven communities all have dog parks. Milford is the only community in the surrounding seven communities that does not have a dog park, and my two little puppies want friends. Now, who's going to say no to my two minutes? My two minutes are the but they want friends. Now, who's going to be going to vote against my two pot doxes? My two little puppies? No way, right? You're all going to help me get a dog march. Can I get supporting? Supporting? <laughs> and, uh, and Especially dog dogs marks. that are off the street. Oh, Sandy, you're right. Right. Charlie, you're off the street. It's going to come for the right price, okay? But you got to know that the rail trail is $900,000 a mile. And um, just, I don't think that the room understood that that was going to cost $900,000 a mile. And I know that it was federal money, so what do we care? But it's absurd that a flat trail on an existing path ended up costing $900,000 a mile. And I didn't really talk about that, but I want to talk about dog park. But I don't want it to be as an inflated price, okay? It's Apple. Thank you. Thank you all very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the that's all the time we have they're going to kick us out of the